watching HCTV 22 City News, your source for news and information on issues, people, arts and entertainment, and sports in the city of Hawthorne. In this edition of City News, Hawthorne's main drag isn't looking so drab anymore, City Council gets a royal visit, and something old is now new and very blue. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Hello everyone and welcome to City News. I'm Michelle Mizell Archer. Well, Hawthorne Boulevard's nearly $800,000 facelift is both eye-catching and convenient. Reporter Christina Pascucci has the story. Thanks to Mayor Larry Guidi and city officials, Hawthorne Boulevard has seen major improvements in just seven months. We put in angle parking uh, on the west side of Hawthorne Boulevard between Broadway and uh, 120th Street. Businesses say these additional parking spaces have helped their business. The, the customers say that, that uh, because they have more parking, especially, you know, the, the people that are, you know, can't walk very well, they, they really appreciate the parking spot because it's near over here. One customer remembers what it was like before these spaces were created. Before that, we had to parallel park, uh, you know, double park and, and wait till somebody ran into you before you could get in. Engineers also narrowed the median and thereby created more room for an additional lane on each side of the road, creating yet another benefit. The flow of the traffic, it's been uh, easy, easy moving. Project engineer Alan Lung describes how businesses have reacted to the changes. They're very happy with the pavement treatment that we did on the crosswalk and the city logo at the intersection. People have noticed how little details have made the area look much more upscale. The fountains and not only the palm trees but the little flowers in between and, and just the repavement of Hawthorne Boulevard really I mean, goes to show that our tax dollars are being put to work. Good things are happening. Hawthorne is moving on in the world. The city plans to make further improvements to other parts of Hawthorne Boulevard as the budget allows. For HCTV, I'm Christina Pascucci. This project created an additional 30 parking spaces on Hawthorne Boulevard. Well, Mayor Larry Guidi and council members had a very special guest at a recent city council meeting. It's a pleasure that I'm here tonight to introduce my uncle and His Royal Highness Igwe Kenneth Orizu III. King Igwe Kenneth Orizu III of Newe City in Nigeria was accompanied by his wife, Queen Catherine Orizu, and other family members. The king's spokesman gave a brief history of Newe. The ancient city of Newe is a monarchy which predates any Western or European influence on the African continent. King Orizu also expressed interest in pursuing a sister city relationship between Newe and Hawthorne. Newe and Hawthorne relationship will be mutually fruitful, honorable, and will be a great milestone in the history of international sisterhood. July 22nd was proclaimed Igwe Kenneth Orizu the third day. The mayor also told the king how privileged he felt to be in his presence. Um, your, your Royal Highness, um, it's our great honor here in the city of Hawthorne to have a dignitary in your position to visit us and visit our, our humble council meeting. The king then presented the mayor with a set of ivory tusks at the council meeting. The tusks symbolize strength and unity in Newe. City council voted 3-0 to zero to make Newe a sister city. A newly completed renovation project restored a 50-year-old facility into a popular summer hangout once again. Alex Batres has more. Splashing in Hawthorne's municipal pool will now be a great way to beat the summer heat. What you see before you is right now a brand new pool with new concrete slab, with new concrete walls around it, and it was completely replastered instead of fiberglass. The renovation project included revamping the lockers, adding canopy sitting areas, and replacing the old storm drain system. The entire piping of the pool system, the entire infrastructure of the drain pipes, of the circulation pipes have been completely replaced. The $2.2 million project took just over a year to complete and transformed the old facility into a summer escape that many are looking forward to. My kids are happy to be, ba be back. We've been here for probably 13 years. I'm just excited. It's just really exciting. I'll definitely be here all summer with my family. 
while children enjoy swimming in this newly renovated pool, others say this new facility is beyond what they expected. A lot of people say it looks like a resort. It's like really beautiful compared to how it used to be. The old pool was much smaller compared to the new pool, which is 75 feet wide and 13 feet deep, pleasing swimmers and divers as well. It will also accommodate the disabled. It has a system here that can actually lift a handicapped person and put him in the pool. With a place that welcomes everyone, there's no question that many will be spending their summer days at Hawthorne's Municipal Pool. For HCTV, I'm Alex Bacchus. For more information on pool hours and swim lessons, you can contact the Recreation and Community Services Department at 310-349-1640. August 26th is the deadline for you to cast your vote for the clean water fee. The proposal is for residents who own properties that are 6,000 square feet or less to pay $2.50 a month for the next 10 years. The fee is to help pay for new underground filtering devices and other equipment that will purify storm runoff before it reaches the ocean. Senior citizens are exempt from this payment. The changes are being done to comply with state mandates to protect our water. If you didn't get a ballot or you lost your ballot or you messed up when you were filling it out, you can always request a new one uh, by contacting the city clerk or public works. When filling out your ballot, make sure you put a check mark next to yes if you're voting yes and no if you're voting no. Also, don't forget to print your name, sign your name, and print your address on the ballot. You must also fold the ballot so that your name and address appear in the envelope's window. If you have any questions regarding the clean water fee or the voting ballot, you can call 310-349-2987. You can also visit the city's website at www.cityofhawthorne.com. Coming up next on City News, see how you can keep your family safe in the face of disaster. And we also show you how to protect yourself from a potentially deadly virus. Stay tuned. I joined the National Guard and never thought I'd be saving lives. It's more than money for college. It's built my character and given me a sense of accomplishment. Now I'm on a career path and I'm the leader of my team. I put on the uniform and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM. Hi, I'm Sasha Vujacic from Los Angeles Lakers, and you're watching HCTV on Channel 22. Welcome back. Just when Southern California residents started to forget that they live in the land of earthquakes, Mother Nature shook things up a bit. HCTV reporter Christina Pascucci has the community's reaction and tells us what we should do before the next big one hits. It's been over a decade since Southern Californians have felt a rattle comparable to the Northridge earthquake. Luckily, the 5.4 magnitude quake that hit Chino Hills July 29th did not cause nearly as much damage as the last big one. Still, it gave residents a scare. It was like really scary because like I was in bed and like my bed started shaking and I was like, and then I got up and I was like, oh wow. Hawthorne residents were surprised that they could feel the intensity of the shake. It was kind of crazy. I didn't know we would feel it all the way down here. The quake was so intense that it was felt as far south as San Diego and as far east as Las Vegas. This is probably like one of the biggest I've ever actually felt. One school teacher said her kids knew exactly what to do when the earthquake hit. They actually, you know, ran under their desk and they dug and covered. I was really impressed. I told them, great job, kids. Others commented on whether they felt prepared. Yes, I am prepared. I'm going to get on my knees and pray. We're getting a lot of water bottles for everybody and making sure they have some canned food in the, stored in the cabinets. Having non-perishable food and water is a must. 
Ideally, each family should have a 72-hour kit that also contains a flashlight, batteries, and a portable radio. Some additional items that experts recommend are a first aid kit, extra blankets and clothes, and any medications and food for those with special needs. Don't forget about your pets. And of course, in the event of an earthquake, you should know the correct way to drop, cover, and hold. For HCTV, I'm Christina Pascucci. To learn more about earthquakes and how to prepare, visit www.oes.ca.gov. Well, last City News, we brought you a story about a young girl with a mysterious skin disease. Well, 13-year-old Tabrisha has not only gained the help of a local business, but national attention as well. Tabrisha and her mother, Cheryl Hackett, are scheduled to be on The Doctors. The spinoff of The Dr. Phil Show premieres next month. The show's crew was at the mother and daughter's Hawthorne home late last month, interviewing them about the light-colored spots that started appearing all over Tabrisha's body six years ago. Hackett and Tabrisha then filmed a segment of the show at a Hollywood studio earlier this month. The segment will air September 12th on Channel 9 at 11 a.m. Meanwhile, a Hawthorne beauty supply store has set up a collection fund for Tabrisha. It's kind of rough for kids to grow up and they have ailments and things that happen to them. And you, uh, you want to make sure that they kind of get a, a, a decent upbringing as far as, you know, not being teased. So far, the store has raised more than $200 to help Tabrisha and her mother cover costs of doctor visits. Employees at Ace Beauty Supply are taking donations for Tabrisha in exchange for these bags. Store owner Danny Samuel is asking other businesses to help. Just do something, you know. Something's better than nothing. Tabrisha and her mother have visited dozens of doctors, but have not yet found a diagnosis. For the next six months, Ace Beauty Supply plans to give Tabrisha and her mother a monthly check from the fundraising. To help, stop by the store located at 12805 Prairie Avenue, or call Cheryl Hackett at 310-462-9506. For more information about The Doctor's show premiering next month, log on to www.thedoctorstv.com. Well, West Nile virus has been found in every county in California. HCTV reporter Cindy San Luis spoke with the Los Angeles County West Vector Control District on how to protect yourself. West Nile virus is a disease transmitted by mosquito bites and is more widespread in the summertime. The warmer it is, the faster the, the faster the mosquitoes will reproduce and the faster the virus will reproduce within the mosquito itself. Mosquitoes attain the virus when feeding on infected birds. Then during subsequent blood feedings, the mosquito can then transmit the disease to other birds, people, horses, and squirrels. Most people will not show any symptoms of West Nile virus. About 20% of those infected will develop West Nile fever, which is similar to the flu. Symptoms include nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, skin rash, and swollen lymph glands. Less than 1% of infected people will develop West Nile neuroinvasive disease. Symptoms include high fever, swelling of the brain, neck stiffness, coma, paralysis, and in rare instances, death. Contact your doctor if you think you have the West Nile virus. Generally, um, people over age 50 are at greater risk of becoming ill, as well as anyone with the weakened immune systems. L.A. County had 300 reported cases of West Nile virus with 13 deaths in 2004. In 2007, there were 44 cases with 5 deaths. Once you're infected with West Nile virus, regardless of whether you show symptoms or not, you become immune to West Nile virus uh, for the rest of your life. To protect yourself from mosquitoes, Vector Control suggests you follow the 5 Ds. Drain. Check around your home for stagnant water. Anything that can hold water for a few days is a potential breeding ground. Deny. Deny entry of mosquitoes into your home. Keep doors closed at all times and have proper screening on windows. Dawn and dusk. Mosquitoes are most active at this time, so avoid being outdoors. Dress. Wear long pants.